Yo, all right, here we go. We're going to go over question two from 2018 AP Calculus AB exam. This was a calculator required question. Uh, so keep that in mind while we're doing it. All right, so here we go. So it says a particle moves along the x axis with velocity given by this function here on this interval between t between 0 and 3.5. And it says the particle is at position x equals negative 5 at time t equals 0. So I like to see this and translate this to, okay, they're telling me that x of 0 equals negative 5, right? So I have my position function, x of t, right? I have my velocity function, which we should know is the derivative of position. And we also know that they're probably going to be talking about our acceleration function, all right? So those are the three functions. Uh, in a typical rectilinear motion problem. So now here we go. It says find the acceleration of the particle at t equals 3 at that instant. So we need to know that the derivative of velocity is acceleration, right? So if I want the acceleration at 3, I want the derivative of velocity evaluated at 3, right? Which is the acceleration at three. So this is what I'm figuring out here. And then, as I said, this was a calculator question. So this would have been done in your calculator. So you may have had this in uh, Y1 in your TI calculator, for example, and then you do math eight, which is n deriv, uh, and you basically evaluate the derivative of this function specifically at t equals three. And when you do that, you get negative 2.118 dot, 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 uh, there were no units here, um, but if there would have been, if velocity would have been in, say, meters per second, your acceleration would have been in meters per second squared. Or if it was miles per hour, it would have been miles per hour squared. Okay, so pretty straightforward question. Now, remember, on your test this year, you're not going to have a question that requires the use of such a calculator, but they still can ask this question. They just might give you a function, right, that you can maybe more easily take the derivative of it. It's not that we can't take the derivative of this. We could use the quotient rule combined with the chain rule, um, but evaluating this specifically at three uh, is not something you're gonna be required to do, right? It would have to be some nice uh, worked out sign of like, you know, pi over six or pi over three or something to that effect, All right? So you could still be asked this question. They just have to give you a function that you can work more with uh, by your hand. All right, so that's that. Um, Let's move on to the next question here. So now it says find the position of the particle at t equals 3. So now we're going to the position. So here they gave us the velocity. We kind of started here, all right? And they asked about acceleration, so we had to take the derivative of that. Now they're asking us about the position. So that's kind of like going backwards, so to speak. So there's a couple ways to get after this question and to think about it. They're basically the same way, but maybe in your mind you, you think about it differently. So let me show you how I would do this. If they want the position of the particle at t equals 3, I would in my head say, well, wouldn't it be great if I had a function that represented x of t? Because if I did, I could just chuck 3 in it. So they didn't give me that function, but I can get it pretty easily because they gave me the derivative of the position function right here, and then they gave me an initial condition for that position function. So whenever you're given a derivative and an initial condition, you can write the function as an integral function pretty easily, right? So I'm going to write integral, and if I want this to be a function of t, I just put a t up there, and then it would be the derivative of whatever this function is. So I could write x prime, but I'm going to write v because I like writing v here for velocity. And I should probably call this now v of x dx, since this is really now a dummy variable, since I'm making a definite integral. And at the end of the day, this will get dumped in. And then you have to now account for this here, which x of 0 equals negative 5. If you remember how we did that, right, we put the 0 there. We do the negative 5 here. And now I have a function that represents my position function. Uh, if you don't believe me, just check it. So in other words, do x of 0. See if this is actually satisfied, right? If I plug 0 in for t here, this integral is 0. I get negative 5, so then that is satisfied. Take the derivative of this function, right? The derivative of negative 5 is 0. The derivative of the integral, right, 
is just going to be they're going to undo each other, but that little variable swap takes place, right? And the bottom's a constant. It's not going to matter. So you just get V of T. So then this is satisfied. So this certainly would be a representation for the position function. So now if I want the position specifically at 3, I would just do X of 3, right? So that's negative 5 plus the integral from 0 to 3 of the velocity function here. And now again, this was a calculator question. So I would have this in Y1. I can do this integral using math 9. Just make sure I added negative 5 to it. And at the end of the day, if you do it, you get negative 1.760. So all done in your calculator. Again, could they ask you a similar type question? They certainly could. They just give you a function that's easily to work, uh, easier to work with um, where you could do the integral uh, of the function or, or maybe they give you a graph. We have to use net side area to figure it out. Um, so they could ask you the concepts here, just word it a little differently. Now, I'm going to write or, but this really isn't or. This is another way of doing it. So a lot of times... Uh, you see it written this way, whereas, all right, hey, I know that whole fundamental theorem of calculus thing, right? That x of 3 minus x of 0 would equal the integral from 0 to 3 of, and this time maybe I'll write x prime of, and I'll just write t so I don't write x prime of x, that'll look a little weird, x prime of t dt, right? If I was to do this, find a function whose derivative is x prime, that would be x of t, evaluate from 3 to 0, I would literally get that. Okay, and whether you call this V of T like we did over here, uh, or V, I should say, or X prime, it doesn't matter. This is the idea. This is the fundamental theorem of calculus. So now, what's the story with this? Well, if I want X of 3, which is what I want, I would go ahead and I'd add X of 0 to the other side. So sometimes you'll see this right off the get-go, and maybe I'll change that now to V of T, dt, right? And then you're like, well, what is x of the zero? Well, they told me it was negative five, right? And if you look at it, I mean, you basically, not you basically, you get the same exact thing that we had right here, right? Remember, the variable is a dummy variable in a definite integral. I could have called this q if I wanted to. V of q dq. It doesn't matter when you have a definite integral. So it's just a different way of kind of how it flows in your brain. For whatever reason, I like this flow for me, uh, but this is more of a purist math fundamental theorem of calculus uh, flow, right? H however you want to do it, all right? At the end of the day, you're going to get the same answer. All right, so let's rock and roll. Let's get to the next question. All right, next question says, hey, let's evaluate the integral from 0 to 3.5 of V of T dt, and then let's go ahead and evaluate the integral of 0 to 3.5 of absolute value of V of T dt. So this is your integrating your velocity function, right? So this is integrating the velocity function, and this is integrating the speed function, all right? Because the absolute value of velocity is speed. It says in, once you do that, right, then go ahead and interpret the meaning of each integral. All right, so let's do the evaluation part first. The evaluation part's pretty easy. You literally just put this in your calculator, right? You have this in Y1, and you just do math 9. And when you do it, you should get 2.843 dot, dot, dot. When you do this guy, you can do, uh, if you had velocity in Y1, you could do math 9 and then just do absolute value of Y1, right? If we're talking about how you would do it in your calculator. So if you do that, you end up getting something like that. So now, what are the meanings of these things? Well, you should know this, right? The integral of velocity gives you displacement. All right, so this is the displacement of the particle over the interval, right, 0 to 3.5. So you want to mention that whole interval part. Don't just say displacement because you're not going to get full credit. It's displacement over the interval 0 to 3.5, all right? You may even say it's the change in position over the interval 0 to 3.5. And this is just kind of like a note. This should make sense to you. Because if you're going to integrate velocity from one point A to another point B, think about it. Give me a function whose derivative is velocity. That would be position evaluated from A to B. And then fundamental theorem of calculus, I get the position at B minus the position at A. So that's a change, right, minus in position. That's all it is. We call that displacement, okay? 
It's a little different when you integrate the absolute value of velocity, right? So what's the story there? Well, that ends up getting or ends up giving you the total distance traveled over the interval 0 to 3.5, okay? So that gives you the total distance, not displacement, traveled. So like if you have something that's going back and forth, maybe it goes this way, four units, that way, two units, this way, five units, you keep adding all those up to get the total distance, whereas displacement is literally just a change in position, okay? Um, so here the change in position was 2.8, but it traveled back and forth on that interval, so it accumulated more distance. And the actual total distance was 3.737. Okay. Uh, one way to think about this, right? If you, and, and this is just in general terms now, not this actual function because I didn't, I'm not looking at the graph, right? But when your, uh, if you have your velocity function and sometimes it's positive and sometimes it's negative, right? When you're integrating from one point to the other point, right? How do we do integrals? It's net signed area. So you'd have this positive value and then plus that negative value plus that positive value, right? They kind of hedge each other out that would get you displacement. But when you integrate the absolute value of velocity, that actually gives you this speed function where now the, the curve is always positive. So you're gonna get all of these values added up when you do the net signed area. There's no hedging, uh, hedging out. So there's, that's why this number in this particular case seems to be greater, all right? That wasn't really the greatest explanation. Um, but it is what it is. All right, I'm going to move on to the next question. I could go into a little bit more detail there. Long story short, integral of velocity, displacement, integral of absolute value of velocity is total distance. Uh, I could do a whole spiel on that. If you want, just let me know, uh, and I'll post a separate video on that. All right, let's move on to the final question here. All right, so the final question here for this part says a second particle moves along the x-axis with position given by x2 of t. Uh, and it's going to be that same interval. It says at what time t are the two particles moving with the same velocity? So really not too terribly difficult here. So we have x of t, or it's actually x2 of t, and that's equal to t squared minus t. So you're like, all right, if I want to know when these two particles are moving with the same velocity, well, then maybe I should get both velocity functions. Now, I already have v of t. That was given to me, right? That was that crazy 10 sine of 0.4 t squared over t squared minus t plus 3, which is probably in my calculator because it's a calc question. Well, let me get this velocity function. We would call that v subscript 2 of t. That would just be 2t minus 1. So if I want to know when they have the same or equal velocity, I should probably set them equal. So I literally would set 2t minus 1 equal to, and I don't want to rewrite all this, I'm just going to say equal to v of t. And this is solved in my calculator. So you have two ways that you can go about doing this, right? One way is you can graph this, right? Maybe put that in y, uh, y2, graph that, maybe put that in y1, and see where they intersect, all right? And then that value is uh, x value, right? is going to be, or in this case, T value is going to be your answer. All right. I would adjust my window so that we're only looking at what we want to look at. So on your, you know, graphing device, your X min is zero, your X max is 3.5. You might have to mess with the Y scale a little bit so that you can actually see the intersection if you're going to do it this way. All right. The other way to do it, maybe arguably a cleaner way to do it is to get one side equal to zero, which is the way I like to do it. So I would subtract the, I don't know why I wrote two there. I would subtract the uh, 2t from both sides, add the one to both sides, and I would graph this in my calculator. All right, so a couple of ways you can do it. Uh, if this was already in y1 and you didn't want to mess with it in y2, you can do y1 minus 2t plus one, shut off the y1 graph, just graph the y2 graph, now, if I do it this way, I'm just going to see where the graph hits the x-axis, where it's equal to zero. 
So you say, you know, why, what's the difference? Why would I want to do it this way? Well, I guess it's arguably an easier way to do it because they give you where you should be looking. So this you can control, right, in terms of X min zero, X max 3.5 in your window, your graphing window. And now since you know you're looking forward to hit the X axis, just a, a positive Y value and a negative Y value for your Y window, you know you're going to capture it if it all exists, where here you kind of have to figure it out. Uh, it's not a big difference, but uh, at the end of the day, it is what it is, right? So when you do this, you're going to get um, T equals 1.570 dot, dot, dot when you solve this graphically. So that would be a solve graphically type situation. So this question was really not too bad, right? It's really not too bad of a calculator question. Again, your question that you get this year would probably be, well, would have to be a little bit more uh, legwork done on your part because you're not going to be allowed to use your calculator to evaluate an integral or evaluate a derivative at a specific value. Um, so that's just that. All right. So hopefully that helped. Uh, We'll keep rocking and rolling. Hope everyone's safe. And I'll post uh, the solution to question three soon enough. Take care.